Oh, Flo, this show is going to be so great. Listen to this question. Can you go to fortune tellers, psychics? Can you do tarot cards? Can you get your horoscope even for fun? Uh-oh. I don't know, Kathy. That kind of sounds like somebody that's mad at God and looking for him someplace else. Are Bible teachings outdated? I don't think so. I don't know. We'll see. Well, hi and welcome to Sister to Sister. You have joined us today for really, really good questions. And I'm gonna read the first one because I don't know how you feel about this. We'll find out. Can there be a place for horoscopes, psychic readings, palm readings, tarot cards, even if it's for fun in a believer's life? Ooh. I think the key there is believer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because once God saves your soul and you believe in Him, there are certain rules. Before you know the Lord, you know, wait till He convicts you. Uh, I, my mom and I had bought tarot cards when I was a, like kind of a preteen and we thought this is cool, read horoscopes and that sort of thing. But I need to say this. Psalm 19 says the firmament declares the glory of God, that he named all the stars, whether they're still growing now, they're burning out, whatever they're doing. And, and Job also mentions what the Pleiades, uh, Ursa Major, he calls it the bear and Orion. So the stars do have names, but it's what we do with them. What did the wise men do? They followed right. the star right. to glorify the Lord because they said we saw his star in the east. So it's not that we tell our fortune, our future with it because there were many kings in the Bible who consulted witchcraft, who consulted sorcerers, who tried to tell the future and it says it aroused God's anger, 2 Chronicles. Mm -hmm. It aroused God's anger because they sought mediums instead right. of seeking the Lord. Right. So if you're a believer, you better think twice and look at the scriptures. Even if you're not a believer, you better think twice. This is bad juju. I just, I just love, um, that was such a solid, mm -hmm. solid answer. answer. Um, I love it uh, because, you know, astrology is the study of the stars and God created all of that. So the whole thing of it is, is why are you worshiping the creation? instead of yes. the creator. So anything that draws your attention uh, as the source is a counterfeit um, because it was created by God. So if you are putting your trust and faith in something he created, you know, uh, when you have a problem, you go to the manufacturer of that item. You don't go outside and have a conversation with your car. You don't go, well, why are you squeaking? Why are you making this funny noise? That's you know, true. you take it to a mechanic, you, you take and preferably, you know, you rather take it to the dealer itself, depending on what is wrong, uh, what's going on with it. You know, uh, Jeremiah says to us that, you know, God is, is speaking in here and he's saying, you're not like the other nations. This is detestable. Don't do that, you know. Um, Daniel lets us know that it, it's detestable when the king calls for Daniel to interpret even the wise men. And it was, it was very common in that culture and it's still in some cultures. They call for what they call wise men and the magicians and, you know, all, all of those to come. And, da and Daniel was like, they, you know, even, even they were saying, oh, king, there's nobody in the land that can give you the understanding of this. Yep. But it was used, God used that because Daniel was on the scene, Daniel was able to introduce the king to, the, to God, the real God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So I think that um, we have to watch that we don't allow ourselves to be open to the counterfeit.
the other thing, just real quick if I can, I think what people don't understand when you say something's for fun, I'm reading your palm, I'm doing this, you don't understand in the spirit realm, the yes. dynamic, yeah. what is behind it. And yep. you were asking well, earlier about different thing. cultures. Right. And the thing of it is, is we don't teach and talk, we don't even right. wanna hear about that. Why is it that I can go to another country and have mass deliverance because they are spiritually alert mm -hmm. and aware? Here, I gotta have a whole conversation with you that it is demonic, Tell you, what, and then I gotta go back and forth with you whether the demons are real or <laughs> you know, uh, do they have yeah. authority, da, da 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 By the time we're done, I'm too tired to do any right. deliverance on you. But I think, <laughs> go ahead. I, mean, I think it's very I would demonic. Say, is it fun? I would say do not dance with the devil at yeah. all for psychic right. readings, right. anything crazy, demonic. I mean, the scripture is but so people clear. people don't see it as that though, Amy. Yeah. That's the thing. They don't, when you, when you say fun, it's like, I can remember going to Catholic Ooh, school and we would have yeah. fairs, yeah. you know? We and we words. would have the booths where, you know, and you'd go in and somebody pretend to yeah. read your palm. So, you know. But it opens up the door uh, yeah, to does. the devil. Yeah. We have well, to be I mean, very clear. The two scriptures, real quick. Mm -hmm. um, Deuteronomy: Anyone who practices divinations, mm -hmm. tells fortunes, interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or a medium, mm -hmm. or a necromancer, or one who inquires of the dead, for whoever does these things is an abomination That's to the right. Lord. New right. Testament: Galatians, idolatry, sorcery, mm -hmm. enmity, and uh, mm -hmm. the list goes on. I warned you: those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. That is not. The the truth, there is a false spirit behind it. I mean, it people, it could, it could like literally turn the trajectory of your life by putting your faith or belief in something that is not truth. So I would steer clear if you're a believer of anything witchcrafty, sorcery, divination, psychic reading yeah. of that kind of sort. But see, when you have people who have done it and then they've had results and they've had people, you know, I went somewhere and somebody it's read fake. seashells yeah. and what they said yeah. came to pass. I went mm -hmm. somewhere and I called a psychic and she really did. You know, it's, it's having that understanding that I have respect for anybody that operates in the spirit realm. The discernment of what spirit are they dealing yeah. with yeah. is yeah. what needs to kick yeah. in. Yeah. Do, what do you tell mm -hmm. your kids? I mean, I was gonna say, I even, even the Ooh. Ouija boards, like I warned my girls, like mm -hmm. when yeah. you go to like sleepovers and stuff mm -hmm. like that, do not mess with that. Yeah, oh, it's a fun board game, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That mm -hmm. opens yourself mm -hmm. up to spiritual yeah. darkness. Mm -hmm. And we know that we wrestle not against right. flesh That's and blood, right. but That's against right. spiritual darkness, evil spirits. So I have warned them from young yeah. ages, you do not mess with spiritual because right, you know what the, you know mm -hmm. it's not fake mm -hmm. there is there are That's real right, i said it's fake but some is real yeah. mm. it, it is Even real it's a counterfeit good issue. question yeah. you, you yeah, wrote right. this mm -hmm. this is a hard question you wrote this but this is a really hard question too so i'm going to flow <laughs> and uh -oh. it says are there any biblical teachings <laughs> that you think are old or outdated i think it's impossible for the Bible to be outdated there you go. because it was inspired by God. It was written aforetime for our learning. Now, hear me and hear me well. Mm -hmm. Is it important? Does the presentation of it yes. change and there matter? Absolutely, yes. For example, mm -hmm. are there still adulterers in the world? Absolutely. In biblical times when you read what happened, they mixed a concoction and if something happened and your legs swell up, blah, 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 blah. People were stoned, this and that. Um, so now we're, we have come into that dispensation of grace. You know, people aren't dropping dead, you know, <laughs> behind things. But there is a spiritual death that comes if you choose willingly to operate in the level that defies and rebels against the will and the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, um, is it outdated? Absolutely not. How do we apply it to the day? How do I present it? What else? What is another example of that? Let's look at the book of Acts. Let's follow the apostles. When, you know, Paul said, I should be all things to all men. He's not, you know, when he ministered to the Hebrews, he understood how to articulate, how to be an orator to those that were in that faith, that understood that culture. Then you take him over to the Greeks who were philosophers and then he knew how to minister to them. Same gospel, different presentation. Right, right. What do you girls I, I, have? I think there's a big one too. Mm -hmm. I agree, Flo, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome presentation of what you said. Mm -hmm. I think there's a big one and I'm gonna focus on teaching. 
I think the Bible, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Amen. The Bible is true. We don't understand it all. It's That's how right. it's interpreted. That's right. That leads people sometimes astray right. or Amen. causes rituals or mm -hmm. uh, certain things happen. And the one is, can women teach men? Right, mm -hmm. right. That's good. That's so, a good example. So, you know, you grow up with that and you see mostly male pastors mm -hmm. and male preachers. And so here you are. we got a couple of preachers yeah. right here. Yeah. And it was the interpretation, whatever was going on in the Corinthian church, in the Ephesians church, worshiping the goddess Diana, or whatever else history says they were doing, Paul said it. But he said it in a way that people now were interpreting it that women can't be preachers. So is the Bible wrong? No, but the teaching, the, the methods, the things that people use to say this is the Bible That's sometimes right. lead people astray. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Women excellent. should keep kept silent in the church. <laughs> Cover your heads. I mean, there's and things. He says, there I is things. Things. Go he back says, to the Go back to the culture, go back to the church, go yes. back to the situation, be in the room and understand what you're talking Amen. about. Why would God want half of his population to be silent on the earth and not declaring and preaching the gospel? Right. Actually, the opposite is true. The very resurrection of Christ was our first female evangelist. Amen. She was the first one to see him, the right. first one to go out and exclaim that he is risen and the first one to take it back to the people. You know, so I do mm -hmm. think it's important that you don't just take something, pie out of the sky and build an entire doctrine and theology yes. around it when you don't have the right context, the right culture, scripture interprets scripture. So make sure you really study to show yourself approved before you give those strong opinions on what's outdated. Yes. And he know. said, I poured my spirit on all flesh mm -hmm. and Amen. there's neither Either Period. male or Sons female, yeah. or hear Christ's wrote words. That, they, someone wrote that question to us because you're obviously hearing that from friends or family members. I hear it. Mm -hmm. It's old fashioned, men wrote it. And here's what I say, read it, open it. The Holy Spirit himself reveals to the mm -hmm. people the truth. So I'm gonna go to this last question because it's really good. And you wrote this too. And it says, how important is regular church attendance? And I'm going to go to my pastor on yeah, that. Well, I mean, I, I love this because actually when you think about it, it even answers the other two questions we just talked about. You know, we don't follow the horoscope. We follow the word of God right. and we follow the teachings of the scripture. We get with other believers. We are a body of Christ. And Paul warns us, listen, as the days are coming and the end times are coming, you're to gather together more and more. Those planted in the house of the Lord will flourish right. in the courts of our God. There's something that happens that you don't just get online only. There is a face to face. There is a being present. There is a being the hands and feet. There is walking mm -hmm. with somebody, discipling somebody, helping somebody, praying for somebody. Um, I love the scripture too, where Jesus is going to the synagogue as was his custom. It was custom for him to attend the synagogue on a weekly basis mm -hmm. and to learn and to sit and to grow. And I mean, if, if Jesus did it, we do it like even as, more. As King was David his did it. Yeah. Yes. What do you have for me, Corey? I think it's of the utmost importance. I think it's a command, but beyond being a command, I think it's a blessing. It's a gift. Yeah, that's right. And Corey. there's so much scripture that supports that. You know, it says, "Praise God in His sanctuary. Let us not um, forsake the the meeting together. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, for where two or three are gathered in His name, mm -hmm. there am I in their midst. And it's it, it is a gift. I mean, I can. It's part of my testimony. When we first moved to Connecticut, I, we didn't know anybody there. And we found a church, it was a church plant, and we got plugged in there and that became our family. We didn't know anybody, we right. had no family. That became our church family. And that's, you know, that was God's plan for that. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was our answer to prayer there. And that, that's how God envisioned it, that that's your family. People come around you. People helped us in our right, time of right. need. Mm -hmm. And we plugged that's in right. there. We, you know, we served there. And that's part of a growing relationship, not only with the church body, but my relationship with the yes. Lord flourished yeah, through right. that relationship yes. with the local body. Yeah. So yeah. it's of the utmost importance. Yes. Yeah. What do you have, Flo, Roxy? How important is church attendance? Yeah, well, the, Jesus said, go and make disciples. Mm 
-hmm. As the sister said, how do you become a disciple if you're not learning from somebody, if you're not with somebody? There's accountability, there's learning, there's growth. And it does say, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves. And it also says, he who isolates himself, seeks his own desire and goes against all sound wisdom. Don't isolate yourself. It's easy to do, especially after all the pandemics and the sickness and the illnesses and the fear to go out. Don't isolate yourself. Make wise choices, but don't isolate. Right. I think really this question is so good, but I, in my heart, am thinking, I don't want to judge you if you're not attending on a regular basis. I don't want to sit here and say, well, I'm a better Christian. God loves me more. Mm-hmm. We're not saying that at all. Right. Many of you, like Roxanne said, you still have some fear of gathering in the building. But guess what? It's the house of God and there are angels all around and you will be safe and filled with the love of Jesus Christ. So get to church and stay right there. We'll be right back. Okay, okay, welcome back. Girls, stop gibber gabbering. It's so fun. Yeah, so fun. But the next two questions we have for you. This one is almost the most important to me. So I'm going to flow for this one. And it's really simple because I know you asked us this. Is it okay to be mad at God? Well, all I can say, if it's not, then I'm sh- <laughs> <laughs> You're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'd have to say, yes, it's not a place that you want to be, That's but right. you know, God is, he's able to handle it. Yes. And the th- who do you think you're fooling? Like, you know, <laughs> things have <laughs> gone on in my life and you know, uh, Corey, you walk around and you're like, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Yes. God is good all the time, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. You know, and in the meantime, inside your heart, you're going, why didn't you do that? How come, you know, yes. what? And it's, do you really think God doesn't know that? You know I that. mean, who, who are you fooling? So, so I, the God that I serve has big shoulders. He created mm-hmm. me. He knows my most inward parts. That's part of my prayer. So he knows when yeah. Flo was angry. So be ye, you know, be ye angry and yeah. sin not. What's the sin? First of all, quit trying to hide it from God. Like yeah. that fig leaf mm-hmm. worshiping doesn't work. Yes, Ask Adam and Eve, okay? Right, right, right. There they were in the garden, naked, did something they weren't supposed to do, and they grabbed some fig leaves and wrapped it around themselves. Did you really think you were going to fool God? Right. Right. You know, totally. who told you you were naked? Mm-hmm. So who, t- who told you that you're not mad with me? Who told yeah. you you're not angry? When I pray prayers of repentance and I ask for forgiveness, I ask God to forgive me for being angry at him, mm-hmm. for good. not obeying him, yes. for being disappointed with him because it interferes good. with my everyday walk. Right. Can you be angry with, God? you know, God? Absolutely you can. Um, is it a place you want to stay? Right. No, no. no. How right. do I shift from that, Kathy? That is one of the times that I really do have to look up the word on whatever it is I'm angry with God about right. well, and get I an wonder, understanding. Thought, do you have any scripture on this? You're well, my scripture girl. I got a girl. Mm-hmm. I got a lady. Okay. But I want to talk after she, are you done, Flo? Or yeah, you have scripture? <laughs> I do have scriptures. I mean, you could quote Job and you could quote uh, Jeremiah who, you know, were very disturbed with God. But I'm going to my girl, Martha. Oh. Mm. You know, how many times, Martha, Martha, Martha. You, yeah, I know she was good though. You know, she got food on the table yeah, for you right. and take you care of her. She was yeah. hospitality. She Mary was having food, fun right? with cheese, you know, but you know, she said, and we say this with our anger, don't you care God? Yes. When we're angry yes. with him, we might not say I'm angry, but we'll say like Martha said, Jesus, don't you care that I'm serving right. by myself? Do something about it. Wow. That's right. Wow. And what did he do? Oh, Martha, you're just so worried about many things. Just, just come here and rest in oh, me. You know, her gift was hospitality. I'm sure Martha's house, we'd all want to be there. Hospitality, taking care of everyone. And yet... 
the Lord taught her a lesson even in her, she was frustrated with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Yeah. So if she can be, and she was one of Jesus' yeah. best friends, her and Lazarus, her brother and Mary. So I went to my girl, Martha. That's so <laughs> good. And there's That's other good. examples That's too. Good. And I think there's examples of how a, there are people where they're angry and they did sin. Mm -hmm. Like for example, the Israelites, mm -hmm. yes. their anger turned into sin. Mm -hmm. But yes. then there's, you know, Moses or the Psalmist where they express their anger to God and it brought them closer That's to right. the Lord. That's right. So good I examples. think those are good examples in the Bible where mm -hmm. God is, you know, allowing us to express That's that right. anger to him. And then he, like Martha, draws us closer mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. So anger is not a logical emotion. Mm -hmm. It's an emotion. The heart is deceitful above all things. Mm -hmm. And the Lord loves us. He draws us in and we have to allow mm -hmm. him to do that. Mm -hmm. And he allows us to express to that. I'm wondering, okay, as we're, I'm wondering as we're talking, because I'm, I'm really thinking about, you know, things that I've walked through. Can we be mad and angry, but not at God, but at the situation, sure. at yeah. how yeah. I'm feeling about it? Because I, it's just so tattooed that he, he's kind and gracious right. and good. Like it's, I can't, I don't, can't be mad at him, but yet I've had mm -hmm. loss and why are you laughing? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> because it's the tattoo. You, I, no, the tattoo. I, 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 love, it's I love her spirituality and I, I, I know that you're serious, but with all due respect, God is not something in the cosmos. He is real and he is my dad. And just like with my Absolutely. natural father, I was pissed when my dad would do certain things. And my thing with God is I'm dealing with something right here and I know you can change it. Why aren't you changing it? You so know, then I, I, I do, I, you, I, you all don't have to agree. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to give the right answer. I'm giving an honest answer. I get angry and I have been angry and mad at God. What happens at, because of that, then there is that being divinely ruined, being broken because I've gotten angry with God and was able to really pour out my heart, you know, call on me and I will answer. He was able to reveal himself to me in another way and then, and from that point, I was able to see, okay, God, it wasn't you, you know, it's, it's, it's me or it's the circumstance or the situation. Yeah, but well, I have been mad with God honest too. People. Yeah. She's being yeah. honest too yeah. about yeah. where she is with it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? So yeah. mm -hmm. different well, personalities. I'm going to end this right. with the last, last question. I'm going to mm -hmm. go to Corey and I just want you to tell me one answer. What is the point of being a Christian. Oh my Corey. gosh. The son of man came not to be served, but to serve. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. the point of being a Christian is to, to serve others, not ourselves, but to serve others. And in doing so, we are blessed. That's the irony of it, is that when we serve others, we get the blessing out of that. Do you have a scripture for me on that one? Oh, let me look, let the me look. Point, I bet you do. <laughs> yeah, the thief what comes the to point? steal, kill, and destroy, John 10, 10. But Jesus came to give life and life more abundantly. And well, I want that abundant life, even in sorrow and despair. That's right. Well, I, when I looked at this question and said, what is the point of being a Christian? I simply felt in my heart, and it's coming out of my mouth, it's not a point, it is, I am. There's no point to it. It's just, I am. And he loves me so much. This little speck of Kathy on the earth that he cares desperately about me. So the point is, I am, just period, I am. God said, I am, but I say back to him, I am. We'll be right back to wrap this up. So we have the perfect scripture to end with today. And I want you to turn to the book of Psalms if you're able to get it on your phone or you got time to go and get the hardback Bible, do that. Let's look in Psalms 100 verses two through three. Serve the Lord with gladness, come before him in, with presence and singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You know, there is something about how you come to God, how you confront God, whether it is 
honesty, God, I'm angry, God, I'm upset, or whether it is like our Amy who was sharing, listen, I get angry, but there's something tattooed in my brain about the, the joy of God, the joy of, of loving the Lord. And we're all gifted, we're all different. And you know, there's something about you being his sheep. Sheep are unique, but sheep need lead. There's something about being in his presence. You know, David mastered that. David on the backside, you know, out there in the field, not only was he tending to the sheep, he would strum, I would imagine what we would call a guitar today. He's out there playing his music. He's singing praises to the most high God. And I just kind of think that it comforted the sheep. And in the meantime, it was cultivating David's soul. And as it cultivated David's soul, it brought him into a more intimate relationship with his God so that when he was confronted with the enemy or when the enemy tried to confront the things and the people of God, David was in a place to take that adversary on. He killed the lion, he killed the bear. And because of worship, because of that place of intimacy, he was able to take out Goliath, not just numb him with the stone, but he then took the sword and beheaded Goliath. Our God is an awesome God. He's powerful. Practice this week getting into his presence and let him equip you with what you need to advance the kingdom of God. And I'm going to equip you with one more scripture. And it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a woman or a sister. And we do sharpen each other. You see family being with godly people makes me a much better Kathy.